Hey everyone, uh, welcome back for another screencast uh, going over some therms and features how to use it. Uh, this video we're going to cover locations uh, or some organizations might call them posts. So let's get started. I'm going to log in here as Mr. James Dean. Again, different layouts, uh, different colors, so yours may look different than mine. Right off the bat, we see the dashboard here. You should be familiar with that already. What you're going to see in this area right here, the locations panel. And this may be lined up in a different spot depending if your company has dispatch activated in settings, if there's any bolos. Uh, so locations are going to be somewhere in this bottom row. What you're looking for here is any activity in the locations. So I can see there's been a new location four times each of these are new locations sometimes right here it will say updated and it'll tell us what was updated whether it be service and duties uh, contacts or a file so if I'm a security officer and I'm working at the Cascade Shopping Center and I see I've been working there for a few months and I log in and I see that Cascades has been updated uh, it's gonna be uh, beneficial to me to go ahead and check the cascades and see what was updated but in this case it's just a new location because I created them earlier today for this video so the location view uh, is gonna look a little different also sometimes you'll have a location briefing right here if you have your company has scheduling uh, activated in their version of therms there may be a map that shows the Google Maps I have it deactivated so it loads quickly for this video and there will be some other information right there, uh, sometimes a briefing for bullets. So not every company has dispatch activated. If your organization uses dispatch, uh, in other words, they receive calls uh, 24 hours or during specific hours, um, and they want to log those calls for uh, purposes for the security officer to respond or just information, then you'll see this dispatch tab. Uh, some companies may not have that activated. So uh, you'll see the location number is going to be unique per location. Every security organization is going to have a different method for identifying locations. So this may be 100, it may be B100, uh, or maybe D, D for Delta 100. I don't know. Every organization may use these labels differently. So if you do have dispatch, um, and I coming on duty, say, uh, Cascade Shopping Center. And I see that at 4.08, a couple hours earlier today, there was a call for an animal complaint and a homeless vagrant. So if I click on that, I can see everything I need to know about that call. Uh, grocery store clerk, their contact information, and a summary of the call. So it says, uh, the caller stated there's a homeless person in front of the store with a black pit bull on a leash. Action was taken by James Dean. Uh, that is just because before I started this recording, I had clicked clear this call. But if that was a different security officer, say a daytime patrol officer came and took care of it, there would be a link to a report right here that I could click on, would take me to the report, and I can see exactly how that security officer handled it. So I'm going to close out of that. And Let's say I was a dispatcher and I was taking phone calls. Somebody called for this location. I could click new call here and I could put the caller's name in, their phone number, and the time that the call happened. I'd click here, click the time setting. The call came in a couple minutes ago. We go in this location. We automatically set caller gave information be brief here and then you can categorize it so I could just put information only if action is needed you can check the action is needed box and then I can assign it a priority and what this does when I say yes to action needed it asks for priority but this will keep it as a pending dispatch call and there's no priority to this call because they just gave information but I'm going to keep it as action needed because I want 
somebody else to look at it and say, uh, the security officer that's working the site. So I save it. And it gives me a preview of the call. Close it out. So you see the little exclamation mark there shows that it's a pending call. You also see it over here in the menu. It shows a number one because one call is pending. So if I go to the dispatch section, shows that call. Four minutes ago, the call came in. I'll click on it. It also will show that on the dashboard. One call pending, information only. So I will go back to that location, Cascade Shopping Center. Now in the BOLO section of the locations, BOLO stands for be on the lookout. And this is very useful for security officers to pass information to each other uh, or say a supervisor or manager working in the office during the daytime gets a call from the manager of the Cascade Shopping Center and says, hey, uh, this is some important information. A uh, security officer needs to know this tonight while they're working their shift. So the manager would put this in. And it looks like supervisor put this in earlier today and it's gonna expire at the end of the month. Uh, so gang activity, there have been reports from local law enforcement and property management that known local gang members have discharged firearms in the air from a moving vehicle in the parking lot. So if I'm a security officer coming on duty and I see that this is useful to me, uh, if I hear shots uh, fired, uh, firearms going off, then I may have a little bit of information where it's coming from. Uh, I would say that this would be more useful if it had a color or a description of the vehicle better so I can be on the lookout for a certain type of vehicle or maybe even a license plate number. So you'll notice something here. I can't edit this Bolo. All I can do is attach files. And so say I created a Bolo, I would have an edit button. But since I didn't create this Bolo and I'm just a regular user, uh, I cannot edit another person's bolo. This is a supervisor that created it. Now, he, he or any other supervisor can edit bolos. That's just some useful information if you don't see the edit button. Now I can view inactive bolos. Say this is the first time working at this location and I wanna know what's been going on in the past. So I see a low priority bulletin here that's expired. Now there's a black pit bull that's been seen with a homeless person on the northeast corner of the shopping center. Be cautious, this dog has been known to be aggressive. Uh, so that's useful information, obviously. And I did see that there was a dispatch call that had something to do with a dog earlier today. So there we go. Already I'm getting useful information by cruising through the bolos for this location. Moving on to service and duties. Service and duties are gonna be used different for every location and every organization. Uh, I like to think of services uh, as information for the location, whether they be post orders, uh, local law enforcement contact information, or maybe community rules. Now duties are the green icon boxes, and those are tasks that we have to complete uh, or something that well, we as security personnel are assigned to do for this location. In this case, it's locked parking lot gates. Uh, so I'll go into some other locations here and we'll see what kind of service and duties they have. Luxury apartments. If I go here, this one has a duty that is lock unlock laundry rooms. And it gives me some information about what time to lock them and what time to unlock them. That's useful uh, when I'm completing my report uh, in another screencast, we cover reports in detail, but any tasks that are assigned to a location, you'll see in a report when you're completing a report for that location. It gives you an option to check the box as complete and put a time in that you did it. So those are great for completing in reports. Now the blue boxes, again, those are services. This one is our post orders. It gives us details on what we're supposed to do while we're patrolling the location. Uh, so there's more information there for that. And it can tell us when it was last updated, which is also useful. So if I've been working at this apartment community for a few months and every couple of days I log in online and I notice this one was updated, I can see that somebody changed something in here. So I'll reread it. But I already know the community rules because they haven't been updated in a while. Uh, so that's how you can 
view that last updated timestamp. So it gives us the community rules here. Only person, personal assistant animals are allowed. No other pets or animals of any kind are permitted. Uh, smoking, possession, manufacturing of drugs, all that good stuff. So these are scrollable boxes. If there's a lot of information, you can cruise through there. Uh, okay, moving on to the reports tab. And this will show us any past or current reports. Uh, the, this one is in progress by John Doe. So I can click on the report and go to it. He hasn't entered any information yet. But I can show you here, here's a duty uh, in that box that showed us service and duties. The green one is a duty to lock and lock laundry rooms. If I go back to that report and this is the building of a report view. I notice here I have it a box that tells me the specific duties for the location. Now this is very useful after I completed the duty. I hit details. Uh, I can get a refresh on exactly what time, uh, what I'm supposed to do. And then I can check the complete duty box. And I can go ahead and enter some notes if I need to. Lock doors, no issues and say I did this at 7.35, I hit save, and it adds that duty to my report. And again, this report, once it gets completed and approved by a manager, uh, it will go to the apartment manager or whoever's in the subscriber list for this location. So I can take a look here. In the subscribers box, we have three people that are going to get notified of that report once it's completed. Those are automatically emailed. Now these are added by supervisors and administrators in the therm system for your company. Uh, so you should be able to add users in here if you're a regular user. So back to the reports. Uh, if, say I wanted to create a new report for myself. I could I hit new report. Now we've got two reports in progress. Uh, it's completely acceptable to have one report with two different officers uh, if we're working the same shift or overlapping each other. But again, that's gonna be a company specific procedure and how they handle it. So I can go back in here if I need to and I'm gonna delete this report since there's already a report in progress. Go back to locations. And contacts for this location. Contacts are useful, and they're specific for the location. In this case, we have the assistant property manager, Jennifer Nolan, uh, gives us a phone number and an email address. It tells us right here, the access is regular. I'm a regular user, so I'm able to see it. And I can see John Doe updated this today at 7.12 p.m. Uh, gives me some notes here. Contact for any after hour emergencies before you contact the manager. And then down here I see, I actually have Katie Seagal, the property manager's phone number and email address. And then a little bit further down, I've got emergency maintenance phone number and a note that says this number is okay to give to residents. Uh, so again, as a security officer working at this location, these are useful contacts uh, for me to perform my duties. Uh, if there's a fire or uh, any, any emergency that happens, say at nighttime or on the weekend when the, uh, any of these folks that work there aren't on site, I can contact them need be. And moving on, we can go to files. Now, there can be any number of files uploaded here. They could be property maps, or they could be check in and check out rosters, uh, any documents that we would print up for the location specifically. Uh, these files are uploaded only for this location. They're not viewable anywhere else. They're not going to be available in the file box here. Uh, they're only going to be available in the location view. So here we've got a property map. I click on it, I can see the property map. Uh, if I wanted to upload something, I could do that here. Now, if I had a picture of a suspicious person or a vehicle to, uh, that we want to keep an eye out for, I wouldn't upload it here. I would say that it would be more appropriate to go to a report 
and upload it in a report or go to a bolo create a bolo and attach it to that bolo so i'll go ahead and do that now we're going to say there's a suspicious vehicle uh, in the parking lot and i can give it a priority uh, i wouldn't say a suspicious vehicle is really any priority we'll assign it a low priority i can say it'll expire in two weeks that means this bulletin will show as active for two weeks or until this date now if i don't set a date it will default to 90 days from now that's the system default and I can put a note in here. I witnessed a vehicle driving slowly through the parking lot, looking in other car windows, uh, or something descriptive. Uh, you guys get the point. So I would save it, and then there's my boil. So I can attach a file if I had a picture of the vehicle. I would do it here. I would click attach and it would bring up my file upload and I'd attach it to it. So you notice I have the edit, delete it, and expire buttons here. And I don't have those here. Uh, just double tap in this. It's because I created this, so I have access to edit and delete a bolo that I created. Now, I don't think it's ever a good idea to delete a bolo uh, unless it's completely erroneous and doesn't belong in this location. Uh, the best thing to do for bolos is just to expire them. So I click it, it wants to confirm, click again to expire. So then it moves it out of here. So we still have a record of it, but it's going to be in the inactive bolos. All right. Great. So I hope that covers everything you need to know about locations. And uh, if you have any feature ideas or requests, uh, any other questions, click on the help and support section, and you know how to contact us from there. Thanks for watching.